Hi everyone, thank you very much for coming to my talk. So I'll speak again about the uh, plasma propulsion or space propulsion. Uh, basically, the title is plasma propulsion using novel concepts. It's very broad, and I apologize for not describing everything, but I will try at least to, to give you some understanding of what is existing now and what is new in this subject. Uh, so basically, during uh, you see here. This is a nice picture from NASA, it's a G GPL lab uh, at NASA uh, with all the missions during the last 50 years uh, to, to, to space. And here you have years, uh, you don't see it, okay. And here you have objects and it's a lot of missions and it's only NASA. And during this time the number of missions is, is really amazing, it's very huge. And all of them are possible due to different propulsion systems. It's only one way to, to go to space and to travel uh, in space. So the main known, uh, actually, and uh, main propulsion system is a chemical rocket or chemical propulsion system. And also there is uh, another very important propulsion system when you are already in the space, how to move your spacecraft. It's a uh, propulsion based on plasma discharge. Uh, here you can uh, you see image of spacecraft uh, with an uh, ion thruster. S these propulsion systems they are very different actually. Uh, for example, the chem chemical propulsion uh, provides fuel exposed with uh, velocity 3 km per second and a huge, huge thrust. That's why uh, you can start from the Earth with this propulsion system and go to space. Uh, while the plasma based propulsion system they provide much smaller trust is actually it's less than it's like one gram or less uh, but the velocity uh, exposed velocity of the fuel of the propellant is much higher and it's very important uh, because we if we look at one of two basic equations in the propulsion it's a Tsiolkovsky equation uh, it says that in order to achieve a velocity change this change of velocity having this initial mass of the spacecraft to dry mass plus fuel, uh, and this is a dry mass, uh, you have, you need to have this exposed velocity of your fuel. So we now, we try to apply this equation to two situations, to chemical and plasma propulsion, and for example, we have two ton spacecraft, one kilometer per second delta V, and for chemical propulsion, we, we need, using just this equation, we need uh, to spend one ton of fuel, while if you use electric propulsion, we need to spend only 50 kilo of fuel. And it's a huge difference. Uh, and in space, it's quite important, I should say, that uh, each kilo that you send in space, even on the lowest orbit, uh, in the cheapest uh, uh, way, it's at least 20,000 euros. So it means if you save one ton of mass, you save uh, 20 million euros, at least. Uh, and th this is quite strong motivation to use this propulsion system in space. Uh, even with a small trust, if you turn it on and wait for a year, you finally have the uh, efficient acceleration. Uh, that's how, how it works. And just to give you an idea of delta V values, here is a nice map, uh, a road map from Wikipedia. So how, how much you need to spend the delta V or to, to have delta V? Uh, to travel between Earth, Sun, Mars, and Moon, and an intermediate object. So, for example, if you are at the lowest, uh, low Earth orbit, uh, orbit, and you want to travel to the lunar orbit, so you, it, it, change, it, it depends how you road exactly your way, but you need uh, to have at least 4 km per second delta V. If you want to go to the low Mars orbit, you need to spend like uh, 6 uh, km per second delta V. So, this uh, example was quite realistic. Uh, basically, the plasma propulsion uh, is part of the big family called electric propulsion systems, where the aim is to have a propellant, to have energy source, electrical energy basically, it can be energy from the sun, and combine it together to have directed kinetic energy. And like that, we generate thrust. Uh, the most common thrusters, most powerful thrusters, electric propulsion thrusters, are the Greek time thrusters and the Hulk thrusters. Basically, the idea is the same for both of them. It's to have an ion beam source and a neutralizer. So, for example, for the gridded line thruster, it's just plasma chamber. We put here the gas. Uh, the gas is propellant. Uh, it's quite often xenon. And then we have uh, electrostatic grids. We apply the 
uh, we apply the potentials between them and we accelerate positive ions this way. And of course, this creates trust, but this creates a huge space charge, positive space charge. We need to compensate it. And this is why there is an electron source called neutralizer to emit the same amount of negative charge. And uh, I should say that this system is not just a truster. It's quite complicated and it's very simplified uh, schematics. What do you need to do? to have an operating tr trust. So you, need, you have your gas discharge, you need to provide some power, for example, if it's ICP discharge, you need to have a right generator, for acceleration you need to have a high voltage source, a low voltage source for neutralizer, also you have a flow controller, you have storage system and uh, electrical system. And it's quite a complicated system, but, but it works. Uh, the lifetimes of different components of the trust that are shown here, it's, it's, they are very approximate. The longest lifetime is a gas discharge, usually, uh, because there is, it's just a chamber and uh, quite often electron less discharge. Uh, the acceleration stage lifetime is smaller, but still you can operate for many years. And the smallest lifetime, usually, is for neutralizer. It's about 10, 20, 30,000 of hours. It depends on exact uh, neutralizer. But if everything works, the question is why do we need to search for something more? The answer is that we have new challenges right now. So firstly, we want to have a longer missions, uh, more efficient missions, uh, with low probability of failure. Uh, and another challenge quite recent is downscaling the systems. In fact, uh, now it, here you have a plot, number of launches of small satellites uh, with, with below the 50 kilos, it's very small, uh, in years. And you see it increase, it, there is a huge increase uh, in the number of uh, launches of such small satellites. The reason is that it's much cheaper. And sometimes it's better to have few satellites, very cheap satellites, with a simple instrument than have one uh, half billion dollar satellite with 20 instruments. And if something happens with the satellite, there is no one to repair it and better to, uh, to have some more, let's say, more satellites with some instruments. And it's much cheaper. And here you have an example uh, of quite popular right now, the concept CubeSat. It's 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube, one kilo mass. It's standardized. Uh, it's quite cheap to launch. Uh, and it's why many universities right now can have satellites. And then the satellites are stuck together in the rocket. And for every satellite is very cheap, actually, to launch. Uh, but there is a problem that we cannot easily downscale this propulsion system. There is nothing that can just use right now, nothing efficient at least, uh, electric propulsion for very small systems. Uh, because you have a lot of subsystems here, because you, the neutralizer is extremely complicated to downscale. And uh, for smaller systems you, you have usually situation you have a thruster and you have the same size neutralizer. So you have a kind of two thrusters. And it's, quite complicated than to use this system. Uh, that's why there is a lot of concepts proposing to exclude a neutralizer from systems, and you don't need some subsystems, of course, and you, you address these challenges, you have a longer lifetime and robustness, and you can go, you can downscale easily. But this question actually is not, it's not that simple. How to accelerate the uh, opposite charged particles from the same place? And there is a two group of concepts, two main groups, it's a plasma acceleration concept and a beam acceleration concept. In the plasma acceleration concept, we accelerate plasma as a wall. Uh, and uh, in the beam acceleration concept, uh, we accelerate separately different charges. We separate them in space or in time from the same space. Uh, yes. So the plasma acceleration concept, they are already described quite well. Thank you, Mario. Uh, the, the, there is a huge group of uh, uh, plasma expansion concepts. It's an ECR coxal thruster, helicon double light thruster, uh, it's a CubeSat uh, bipolar thruster, and many, many others actually. And the idea is that you have your plasma source, there is a potential, plasma potential here, something positive, and uh, in the far place here you have much lower potential, you have a bipolar field, you have a bipolar acceleration, and in order to, to have efficient acceleration, you have a magnetic nozzle, and like that, you can accelerate plasma. Uh, there is a problem or maybe disadvantage of this concept. Firstly, it's a limited efficiency, as shown already in many works. The efficiency of these systems, it's, uh, it cannot be even the same as, uh, as for usual thrusters. 
it's always lower, it's like a 20% of the best efficiency demonstrated right now. And the, one of the reasons is that if you want to increase the propellant utilization efficiency, so you need to ionize more, you increase uh, your temperature uh, here, uh, the uh, electron temperature here, but with, uh, again, with this, you increase the losses, so you have this competition of processes, uh, and uh, as a result, you have low efficiency. Uh, also, uh, all the demonstrated velocities, x house velocities, in such a concept, uh, quite small, in comparison with the ion thrusters and the whole thrusters. And uh, in addition, you can't easily, in any way separately control the throttle or thrust and the velocity. There is no separate uh, controls. It is evident. Uh, the similar concepts already described. It. It's, it's kind of the same, but you heat separately, heat up plasma to have more acceleration. Uh, but the problem with this concept is that, or feature of this concept is that you need to have a huge, huge, huge power to make it efficient, like a megawatt. And uh, it means that it's quite complicated to find an uh, application where you can take a megawatt of power for your propulsion system only. Uh, and so, uh, another recent concept, which is quite exotic from a uh, Japanese group, is to have a rotating field. Uh, so it's basically ICP discharge with four antennas and you have two RF generators. And exactly, you know, like in the asynchronous mechanical motor, when you have a rotating field, exactly the same situation happens here, but instead of having rotor here, you have a plasma. So you have closed current of electrons, and then you have J cross B force, pushing pl plasma, so plasma rotates and pushes away of, of, of this source. But unfortunately, as demonstrated recently, the velocity achieved uh, is quite, quite low and lower than in the previous cases of ex plasma expansion. Then I switch to the beam acceleration concepts. One of the most maybe known is so-called P-gases concept. It's plasma propulsion with electronegative gas. Uh, the idea is to generate electronegative plasma. So we need to use electronegative propellant like iodine or subsilence. Uh, then there is an antenna here. There is magnetic field, transversal magnetic field, putting down the electrons and then they efficiently attach near to the grids. Uh, they efficiently attach to the, new, uh, to the molecules. Uh, creating negative ions, and already demonstrated that you can have a kind of ion-ion plasma here, ultra-free plasma, with electronegativity up to 5,000, meaning that for 5,000 uh, negative ions you have only one electron. And with such plasma it's easy to extract both positive and negative uh, ions, just switching the polarity between the grids, and you have packets of positive and negative ions, and like, like that you don't need the neutralizer, while the system is quite close to the classical ion thruster. And during the 10 years since the concept was invented. Now there is a proof of concept, uh, there is a dedicated prototype operating, and uh, hopefully someday it will fly. Another concept, and I will describe it a bit, a bit, a bit more, it, it's a so-called Neptune concept. It's a very recent concept. Uh, it, uh, it's patented just last year, where the idea is to have a system very, very similar to a traditional ion thruster. You can use xenon as a propellant here, uh, but you use the RF acceleration, and I will describe uh, now how does it works. But generally, it allows you to generate a coincident flow of accelerated ions to high energy and electrons, so you have a quasi-neutral flow. So how does it work? Firstly, the cell bias effect, you know, of course, very well uh, what is said, uh, but I briefly describe. If you have an asymmetric CCP discharge, and you have an RF voltage applied between two electrons of different area. So RF meaning the uh, frequency between ion plasma and electron plasma frequency. Then if you have a capacitor here in series. Then you have two separate effects in such system. First, the effect of capacitor divider. Secondly, actually the self bias effect. So to understand, let's look on the very simplified equivalent circuit of this system. So you have plasma kind of conductor, and you have uh, two special sheets. Each of the sheets capacitor with the diode connected in parallel. Diode appears just because we choose right frequency, so ions respond to average electrical field by electrons to instantaneous. And that's why there is this electrical asymmetry. And then, as a result, you apply a voltage here. Firstly, the voltage is divided and drops over the smaller uh, spatial sheets, if you have good asymmetry. And then, it's, uh, afterwards, it's rectified by this virtual diode. Uh, and as a result, 
uh, plasma gold waveform if measured versus a smaller electrode is like shown here. Uh, it's averagely positive, uh, while it oscillates and periodically approaches uh, almost zero. And uh, as a result, ions get accelerated in this uh, space charge sheets in front of the smaller electron, while electrons escape in short moments when the, the plasma potential is minimal. And you remember we have a capacitor here, which means that there is no DC current. So amount of ions and electrons reaching the uh, electrode are equal by definition, uh, time average at least. Uh, but nothing escapes this, this system right now. So if we imagine we drill holes here, we then have a, we can generate a continuous ion flow and pulsed electron flow. Um, the, it can be trusted, but unfortunately, as was shown already, look this work, for example, uh, it's not efficient system. You have a huge pattern of the grid because the ions are already in front of, of the grid. You have a low efficiency because you can't have a good ion optics because you can have only have only defocusing meniscus in front of the on the grid. Uh, so that's why we are we're looking how to change how to change this concept and the solution is let's do like this. So now we have just a usual line thruster. We apply only RF voltage between two grids and uh, the same RF power can be used actually to power the ICP antenna, so you need only one generator. And what happens? Actually, this circuit, equivalent circuit, is still like what's in the previous case to this system. But now you have this asymmetry different values of these capacitors, just uh, with equal actually grids, just because one grid is facing the plasma, and another one is screened from plasma by the first one, partially screened. And you still have this diet if particles can reach both uh, grids, so it's grids closely spaced. And you can expect that in such a situation you have an ion acceleration between the grids, you have a vertical electron extraction. Uh, the special sheet for ions looks just like for in the C case, like a red line here. For electrons, everything isolates between this situation where they are. Uh, inside they are confined in the source, and in short moments, the special sheets expected to, to collapse and then the electrons can, can, can be extracted. And uh, there are two, two very important features of acceleration that I should mention. That you have still the capacitor here, which means that you have no DC current, so everything you emit is you emit equal charges. And another feature is that the, due to the presence of electrons sometimes in the sheets, you decrease the space charge. And uh, it's, it, it's shown that actually you, you can double the current with the same extraction system, the, the, the ion current that can be extracted in such a system. So to check, we, we're using this experimental setup to check the concept, to check the idea. Uh, it's an ICP source, exactly the, the light, so it, it's similar to what I showed you before. Uh, there is a one RF power generator and power distributed between ICP channel and acceleration channel. And it's attached, this is 10 centimeter scale uh, prototype, attached to much bigger one meter scale chamber with, with diagnostics. So firstly, it was, uh, we were quite happy to see that this recent blue is not very uh, important for physics result, but uh, psychologically it was very important. Uh, secondly, we imagine that there is a cell bias generated at any voltage we apply. So we apply RF voltage, uh, different voltages, and we imagine that it's, aver it's averagely positive uh, just on the grid. And uh, here it's a plot of DC cell bias generated. Uh, in the system as a function of a RF voltage applied and it's just straight line exactly like for CCP, asymmetric uh, CCP discharge. Also, uh, we found that there is an ion acceleration exactly like we expect and there is an electron co-extraction. So, basically the system works as it should work. Uh, more dedicated investigation here you can see the uh, electron probability uh, function. Uh, energy probability function uh, measured by the LM LM probe and fitted with the RFA data, and you can see the time its time average uh, here is that it's kind of max variant somewhere here with extended tail here, more or less. Uh, also, this test shown that we can control the ion energy, but while the ion energy distribution function, it's an ion energy distribution function measured for different acceleration voltages. Uh, they're quite broad, but you can control the ion energy. And the reason why they're broad because the frequency was ex uh, very low. Uh, it was close to the ion plasma frequency. Uh, one more very interesting experiment is shown here. It's uh, measured components of the flux uh, exiting the source at the 10 centimeter distance from the exit for ions separately and the electrons. Uh, and in comparison, you can see the voltage waveform of the grids. 
And uh, you can see that at the moment when electrons are expected to extract, you have a spike here of electron current, and you have kind of deep in the ion current, and then uh, the electron current kind of oscillates, going to some stable value. So it's, there is a lot of physics that should be investigated, but anyway, it results in this uh, space potential in the plume. At any voltage we apply, this uh, space potential in the plume, the potential in the plume measured to the floating potential, is quite low. And it, it, of course, it oscillates, but the amplitude of these oscillations is quite slow. Uh, yeah, so like uh, 20 volts shown here. Uh, also, what we measured is uh, uh, flow directionality. It was a big question. So the ions are directly extracted, accelerated, yes, well, uh, and it's, it was shown here about rotating RFA. So we rotate RFA like this and like that, and in this position we measure this IDF, and in this position we measure this distribution function. And of course, uh, the ion beam is directed, uh, and you measure no energetic ions uh, in this position. But what will happen with, happen with electrons if they are quite structured or they kind of stored in the plume or, or whatever? Uh, and the results shown here, it's a measured flux. It, uh, it's a radial distribution. Sorry, it's disappeared to x centimeters here. Uh, it's a radial distribution for two positions of RFA or two orientations of RFA. So in this position, we measure this distribution of electron flux. In this position, we measure this. And you see that there is a huge anisotropy in the electron flow, uh, which was very, very important, uh, which is very important result. And we did the same in the standard system with ion thruster. So we converted system, our system in the ion thruster. We introduced a neutralizer. We did the same. And you see the result is quite equal uh, flows detected in the two orientations. So as a result, in this system, you, uh, as you can see, you can use only one RF generator. You have gas dis uh, discharge uh, sus sustaining. You have acceleration. And you have actually neutralization. You don't need to use many, many, many subsystems. That's why I believe uh, quite soon uh, this concept will be actually flying. And uh, one of the advantages is a strong technology heritage with existing ion thrusters. That's why it's possible. Uh, yeah, so that's a conclusion for this concept. Uh, but I should generally say that there are so many concepts right now appearing and appearing. I just uh, back from, the, uh, from Japan, IPC conference, and so many, many new concepts. Many of them have to be, of course, well dated. Some of them maybe will be flying. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that in the nearest future in space, we'll have many new and exciting uh, thrusters allowing the, to have a longer lifetime and better efficiency. So here are also the list of references I used in this talk, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for this nice talk. So now the contribution is open to question, comments. Source. What's the source of uh, acceleration uh, energy to carrying out the plasma? So the source is RF power, which you input and uh, it's rectified by the plasma, and that's why you have a uh, you have DC field. So I can accelerating ions. It's battery or power supply. Hmm? The, the, the energy source, the electric source. The electric is, is solar panel, for example. By, by battery or because this is in, in satellite? And, uh, so in satellite, you, you have two types or many types of energy sources. One of them, quite common, is solar energy. You have solar panels and then you have batteries. You charge up the battery that and it can be used, yes. Uh, charge the, the solar energy. Yeah, because sometimes you, you have periods when you cannot use uh, electric energy from the solar panels because of different systems uh, switching on, switching off. So you store the energy in the uh, battery, in some battery, chemical battery, and then you use it when you need to change your uh, velocity or to correct your trajectory. Thank you. Thank you very much for an interesting talk.
Do you have any information on fast neutrals, or is this not an issue in your equipment on by charge exchange collisions? Yeah. Yes, it's a good question. That's why we were trying to measure everything as close as possible, uh, you know, to, 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 to avoid uh, this problem. But of course, it's run neutrals. Uh, but from the point of view of trust, it doesn't actually matter. What does matter is trust. So we checked the concept works, and now we are building the real prototype available to put on the stand uh, with trust balance. And that's how we finally see. But it's it's very important question, but it's very hard to measure, as, as you know. Yeah, but, but with a kind of a thermal probe, as Amelie's uh, just before mentioned, it's possible to measure both the ions and the... Yeah, it's possible, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Yes? Thank you, Dima, for the, for the nice talk. Uh, actually, I think uh, you should have presented first because you covered a very nice introduction of electric propulsion, and I missed that part, so... Uh, just uh, one quick question. Uh, do you know what is the impedance of the plasma that you have for the RF? Uh, uh, you, you mean and is it stable or? Yeah. So of course you know the impedance. Mm -hmm. uh, the nature of this of the sheets. If you're asking uh, about the impedance of of the, the whole plasma, the, the one there is the, no the, impedance the of whole plasma, plasma because so there is an acceleration part and there is an ionization part. It's quite different because in acceleration part you don't have really plasma between the grids. But you you have, you have one, one RF generator, yes. You have one RF generator, so that's why we have this magic box called this distribution and magic okay. box, uh, helping us to. Of course, you have to match everything separately, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and to control the distribution of power. Yes, but it's possible. Okay, thank you. Right, the last question there, Vanya. Oh, I understood that your. Uh, Target energy at the present is of the order of 100 EV for the electron, for the ions. Is uh, right? Now, now it's, we are limited just by... Limited, yes, but is it your final goal or do you plan to increase this? Uh, the, the, so the final goal is uh, like for read, for example, if you know read, mm -hmm. uh, it's at least one kilovolt. But uh, to do this test, we need you know, to go from the plasma laboratory to another laboratory uh, with our concept because everything is limited by the kilowatt really hardly yeah, the energy analysis uh, you know uh, even the we, we cannot <laughs> think about the future yeah we, one kilowatt limit a limitation for this time no 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 it, it should it should work actually as a normal op operation mode it, it's uh, higher than kilowatt below kilowatt you can't have a good efficiency I should say you can't have the grids uh, uh, as well a uh, good grids for, for having good efficiency for level so anyway, if you yeah. plan to go uh, yeah. uh, Please keep in touch with the fusion community for two reasons, for the acceleration and for the fusion of the energy for the next generation of the starships. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so now we finish this session and I would like to thank all the speakers from this session again. <clears throat> Enjoy the lunch.